and welcome to part three of our guide to e-mountain bikes. In this video, we're gonna share some tips to help you get the most from your new e-bike, like this Vitus ESCARP VRX. We've got some specific riding skills to practice, some advice on which modes to use, and some tips on how to maximize your range. Let's talk about tuning your e-bike. It's really tempting, isn't it? I mean, who doesn't want more power and more speed? The thing is, it's not quite as simple as that. Just as it would be if you took your new car to get remapped, your warranty would be instantly void. So if something were to go wrong on your bike, you'll be on your own, and that could prove very expensive. The newest systems are pretty clever too, so they'll know if you tampered with them. Secondly, and this is very important, it's actually illegal unless you're riding it exclusively on private property. So if you have an accident, you could be liable. It's also going to wear out your drivetrain faster and put more strain on your motor. On the road, the 25 km an hour limit is really annoying, but on a mountain bike, it's not such a big deal. And we rarely feel like it puts a dampener on our ride. In the last video, we showed you how to care for your e-mountain bike. And one of the aspects we focused on was the drivetrain, because e-bikes put a lot more stress and strain through your gears than a normal bike. Apart from keeping your drivetrain clean and lubricated, the best way to prolong its life is by only shifting one gear at a time. Now, if you have a SRAM drivetrain on your bike, you should have a special single-click shifter. But if you have a Shimano drivetrain like this Vitus, you won't. So it's important not to grab a handful of gears at one time. Just change one gear at a time and try to anticipate your shifts so that you don't do it when the chain is under maximum load. Some of the most fun you can have on an e-bike is to challenge yourself to get up a steep technical climb. With an e-mountain bike, slopes that you would never dream of tackling suddenly become possible. But you'll only get up them with the right technique, and it's a bit different to how you'd normally attempt a steep climb. On a regular bike, you'd keep your saddle quite high to generate enough power to turn the cranks. On an e-bike, you don't need to do that because the motor does most of the work for you. This means you can optimize your body position to generate traction at the back wheel and keep the front wheel from lifting. To do that, you need to drop your saddle. This shifts your center of gravity down and forwards. Now bend your arms and drop your elbows. This transfers weight over the front wheel to stop it from lifting up. But you can still keep enough over the back wheel to stop it spinning. Now you just have to select a low enough gear that allows you to keep the cranks turning and the motor engaged. If you get out of the saddle, you're likely to lose traction. So stay seated as much as possible and keep your head up so you can focus on the smoothest line up the hill. If you dab on a climb and have to try and get going again, we've got a couple of tips. So first put the motor into turbo or boost mode and make sure you're in a low gear. Aim the bike slightly across the slope to reduce the gradient. So put some tension through the drivetrain and use your back foot to push off while generating a powerful pedal stroke. Now sometimes you're going to come across a climb with a step in it, like this one, with a root in it. And you're going to have to get up out of the saddle to hop the bike over it. But most motors have a feature that will help in these circumstances. Firstly, make sure you're in boost or turbo mode as this amplifies the effect. Now, when you stop pedaling, the motor will continue to spin for a short period of time. This means that you can ride up to an obstacle, stop pedaling, and keep your pedals level for maximum ground clearance, and the motor will drive you up and over it. This motor overrun can also be great for getting a bit of extra drive out of slow corners. So one thing that's impossible to escape on an e-bike is the extra weight. Now the latest e-mountain bikes do a great job of hiding their mass with sorted suspension and geometry, but they're still typically around 10 kilograms heavier than their analog equivalents, which means they need a lot more effort to move around. 
Yes, they're inherently more stable when descending and riding rough terrain, but they're not as easy to change direction or get off the ground. So it can be hard to get the front wheel over obstacles or bunny hop ditches and fallen branches. You're gonna to have to exaggerate your movements and adapt your timing to really get comfortable throwing an e-bike around. Now don't expect that to come naturally straight away. Manuals, for instance. You're going to have to really force your hips back to get the front wheel off the deck, then really thrust your heels forward to lever it up. And you'll need to change your balance point so that it's further back than on an analog bike. To bunny hop an e-bike, you need to get really close to the bike and preload the suspension. Then work on that hip movement backwards to get the front wheel up. As it comes up, you need to move your weight centrally to get the rear wheel to come up. It's a slower, more deliberate process than it is on an analog bike. Now I find it helps to run clip-in pedals on an e-bike because it takes less effort to get the rear wheel off the ground. And if your timing isn't quite perfect, you're much less likely to smash it into whatever you're trying to hop over. While the motor will allow you to accelerate really quickly, once you're up above that 25 km an hour limit, it can be really hard to gain speed by pedaling. On downhills, it's much more effective to pump an e-bike for speed than try to smuggle in sneaky pedal strokes. This is even more effective because you reduce the risk of catching a pedal. So look for little dips to push the bike into, then go light over any rises. Work the terrain and you'll be amazed how much speed you can gain. The final thing we want to talk about is range. Now it's impossible to say exactly how far you can go on your e-bike because there are so many variables. So to get an idea, the best thing you can do is experiment. So ride your favorite local loop entirely in trail mode and see how much battery it uses up. Add a short loop onto the end and ride it until you run out of battery. Record your ride and make a note of how much battery was left what tires you're running, whether it was muddy or dry, add as much detail as you can. By building up a log of your ride, you'll begin to learn how far you can ride and more importantly, how much elevation you can climb. Then you can ride somewhere new without constantly worrying about your range. And to maximize your range, make sure you keep your bike clean and lubricated. Charge your battery indoors, make sure your brakes don't rub, check your tyre pressures regularly and don't get lost. Try and find smooth, gradual climbs rather than anything steep, loose or rough. It's all common sense really, but it can make the difference between riding home and pushing home. So there are a few tips to help you get the most from your new e-mountain bike. A whole new world of fun awaits. Now it's time to go and ride.